What's up everybody, it's Charles, and somehow I have found myself with yet another Mazda Miata. What in the world was I thinking? Now you guys have probably seen the green Mazda Miata that I picked up a while back, and we're getting this ready for street class and autocross. Well, the whole front end was missing or smashed or dented, so I'd been on the hunt to get replacement parts. And of course, I'm not gonna buy new parts because that's insane on a car that is over 20 years old and it's just gonna end up being a toy autocross car anyway. So I'd been on the hunt for a fender, a hood, a bumper, headlights, taillight, handful of other things in order to get this Miata put back together. Now, I'd been searching high and low. There's a couple of Miata resellers not too terribly far from me. And the total for all the parts that I thought I would need was going to be about eight or nine hundred dollars plus i would either have to drive a four and a half hour each way trip or wait a couple months in order to get my parts well me being me and always trying to find another solution found this beauty car right here actually local so that got me thinking is buying an entire parts car better than just buying the individual parts to fix your current vehicle and that is a great question and one that i typically land on the side of yeah buy the parts car however we have to buy these parts cars smart. So the parts that I knew I was gonna need for the green car was a driver's fender, a hood, a bumper cover, a couple of brackets in the front that the bumper bolts to, two headlights, two fog lights, the brackets for each, a tail light, a handful of nuts and bolts, I'm sure, wire connectors, and some other things that I just, I didn't even know if I was going to need. All that added up to about 900 bucks. So I actually stumbled into this Miata that the body's pretty good, but it doesn't have a cylinder head. I thought it was actually in the car, but it's not, so it doesn't even have a cylinder head. What a perfect scenario for me to have a car that's good on the outside or good-ish on the outside, engine issues, and a car with a really good engine and transmission just needs some cosmetic work. So my plan is to take the front end of the silver car, swap it onto the green car, and then we'll probably end up getting this car wrapped, which was part of the plan all along. Anyway, now, I know what you're thinking, Charles, that's the dumbest possible way you could do it. Why don't you take the good engine, good transmission, swap it over into the car that looks nice, and then you'll actually end up doing less work and not having a car that's had some body damage. Well, my friends, that I think is an awesome idea. However, I've committed to the green car, and I'm gonna stick by that as long as I can anyway. Now, if we run into any kind of crazy issues, I may change that up, but for now, I'm gonna stick with the green car, and there's a couple of reasons why. One, like I said, I committed to it, I'm gonna try and stick to that. Two, I'm not a body guy. So I'm actually excited to do something a little different than the normal day to day. Also, another huge reason, if I pull this engine and transmission out and I swap it into this car, I guarantee you what's gonna happen is while I'm in there is going to strike and strike hard. While I'm in there, why don't I do this? 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 That's gonna cost me way more money than if I just swap a couple body panels over and have a car that's two-toned for a while until we get it wrapped. Now, if this were a car where I was very concerned about resale value or things like that, yep, I would stick with the parts car. Somehow the parts car's nicer uh, looking anyway, although not perfect. I would have to swap tops. I would have to swap full interior. As you can see, this interior is nasty, 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 moldy. So I'd have to swap all that as well. Uh, so it, it works out to me anyway to be about the same, but I'm a little more excited to swap the body panels. Let's talk about a handful of things on dealing with a project car and buying a new parts car. This is something that I advocate a lot for, especially if you have the room. This way, you don't have to worry about that one or two bolts or one or two connectors that you never thought you would need. A perfect example is when I did the VR6 swap in the Cabriolet, I bought a Jetta that was a basically a complete car with a blown head gasket. Now, that actually worked out kind of weird because the dude I bought it from swore it was a manual transmission, but it was actually an automatic. Uh, not sure how he screwed that one up, but uh, either way, I ended up getting the car. I bought the car for $400. I pulled everything off of it that I needed. I sold about $300 worth of parts. I scrapped the car for $200. That gave me enough money to buy another engine and transmission that I actually ended up using when I rebuilt the VR6 to put into the Mark One. In addition to that Jetta that I bought for that Cabriolet, I also bought another Cabriolet so I could extract a handful of parts on it. This allowed me to have two different front ends, a handful of bumpers, a couple sets of wheels, and really be able to piece the car together to look exactly like I wanted. The same is gonna kind of be for the Miata. I have all the parts that I know that I need for the Miata. I also have all that stuff that I didn't really consider or didn't really think of that I would need when I swapped all those parts over. You know, I don't know if the headlights work at all, 
we're going to need some connectors. We're going to need the fog lights. We're going to need the brackets. All things that maybe I couldn't source from one of the resellers or online as easily anyway. I have it all at my disposal. I can get the green one put together, make sure everything works. Once that happens, I have a couple of choices. I can part the car out personally. And for someone that has the room and the time and the patience dedicated to doing that, I think that's a great option. In almost every situation, you're gonna make more money off of the vehicle when you're done with it by parting it out. It may only bring $200 for scrap price, but you may have 10 parts on that car worth $60 to $100 each, so you're gonna make a bit more money. However, I will warn you, if you think you are going to get a car, part it out, make a buttload of money, and it's gonna happen in a week, yeah, don't plan on that happening because it's actually way more work. Now, if you specialize in that and have 25 cars, of course the payback is much bigger than if you just have one rando car that you have to deal with. So I don't really have any interest in parting it out myself. I'm gonna take what I need off of it. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get with that local Mazda Miata parts reseller and see what I can get for it through him. I don't have to mess with anything and I don't have to listen to my neighbors complain, which I'll keep my opinions of that to myself. If you can find the right car that fits with what you need, it has the parts on it that you need, plus a bunch of other stuff, buying a parts car can be a huge, huge score. You may not make a ton of money, but if it pays for the things that you needed anyway, or you're at a break even point with parts and you spend what you were gonna spend anyway, which is what I did, plus you get the bonus of having a car to look at, to compare to, and to pull the tiny, tiny little parts off that maybe the junkyard's not gonna have. You know, if this were a Ford Explorer, I wouldn't worry about it because the junkyard has 800,000 of them. Miatas in a junkyard is not a very common thing. And one huge bonus for me anyway is that the wheels that came on the silver Miata are actually the wheels the green car was supposed to have from the factory. What's so great about that is I can take the 16s that were on the green car, put those on the silver car, take the 15s and put them on the green car. The reason being is I need to have the stock wheel width in order to compete in street class for autocross. If I keep the 16 by six and a half, wheels on it, I'm gonna get classed up enough and I don't have any other supporting mods. I am not a good driver anyway, so that would make it even more miserable for me trying to be competitive. All right, so I think we got everything off the silver car that we're going to need. It's now parked outside. I'm actually waiting on a price to see what I can get for it for someone to haul it away. If it's worth a good amount, I'm gonna send it as is. If it ain't worth a whole lot, I'm gonna pull the rear diff, I'm gonna pull the transmission so that I have them because, well, I can't not have the opportunity to have spare parts and just let that opportunity go down the road. Now I did some test fitting on these front brackets that the bumper mounts to, and it looks like we're gonna still need to do a little bit of massaging of metal, especially actually on the passenger side, more so than the driver's side. I think we worked the driver's side pretty good and got it pretty close, but now we need to massage the passenger side as well. As you can see, this bolt hole is supposed to line up with this threaded part right here, and it's, oh, I don't know, 20 millimeters or so, 15 millimeters away from where it needs to be, so we're going to pound that back in, try and get it adjusted. Guys, keep in mind, this is going to be solely an autocross car at this point, so the body lines don't need to be perfect. It just needs to have all the stuff fit on it. All right, I got everything on the front end swapped. I, even though I didn't really need to, I went ahead and swapped the right front fender as well, just so the front end sort of matched each other, not really the rest of the car though. I also made sort of a last minute decision and decided to keep a couple of extra parts. I'm gonna keep the transmission. I'm gonna keep the differential. The intake manifold was already off, so I'm gonna keep that so that we can play around with removing the flaps on that one. And because I had to remove them, I went ahead and kept the prop shaft and the power plant frame also. To buy the car and have it towed to my house was about $900. Already I'm at a break even point for what I would have spent on these parts. And to get the parts that I was gonna get for $800, I would have had to rent a truck, drive to four and a half hours each way, and then hopefully have everything, maybe, maybe not. I'm sure there would have been stuff that I needed that I didn't have. Not to mention I got a box of extra bolts, which I love having a box of extra bolts. So I feel like right now where I'm at, I'm break even 100%, and I got a transmission, and a diff, and a power plant frame, prop shaft, and an intake manifold, basically for free. Now, what do we do with the car once we're done with it? Because I got pretty much everything that I wanted off of it. I could have it scrapped. I got a couple of quotes because it doesn't have a transmission or a complete engine. The values are super duper low. In fact, there's a company that offered me a whopping $35 
to come and get the car. So needless to say, not gonna take that deal. If I would have left everything else in the car, the transmission and diff and all that, it would be worth around $500. Just here's a check, here's some cash, Charles. I'm gonna take your car away. I wouldn't have to fuss with anything. If you have the capacity, we'll say, if you have the capacity to part out a car, like I mentioned earlier, of course you're gonna make way more money than if you just send it away, have somebody come and get it. I went ahead and looked up some pricing on some of this stuff because I wanted to know what the values really were. And these are asking prices from a few different sources like eBay. Of course, I would never expect to get this much for it. I was actually blown away by how much the asking price on some of this was. So for that rear diff, $750. Catalytic converters, uh, I probably wouldn't have sold online. I would have taken it to the local reseller and that's usually like 35 to 50 bucks just for the catalytic converter. Transmissions anywhere from 350 to like 600 bucks. Now I went ahead and swapped the wheels because I wanted the 15s with the narrower wheels which is what the car was supposed to have on it. I put the 16s on the parts car those seem to be going in good, like fair to good condition for about a hundred bucks a piece. I don't think those would have brought that. I would expect maybe $150, maybe 200 on a great day for all four of them. The fans, both fans, $75 asking price. For the full caliper setup, all four corners, about 150 bucks. The front cradle, the front subframe that holds the engine in place, $150. Even the mud flaps. 60 bucks. The fenders are like 200 bucks a piece, so we would have had one that I would have been able to resell. The deck lid for the trunk, 200 to $300, depending on where we looked. 200 bucks a pop for the doors, crazy. 200 bucks a pop for the doors. Even the valve cover was asking $80. $100 for the prop shaft and like 200 bucks for the set of prop shafts for the cars with the limited slip differential. So if I were to part it out and take the time and effort and energy I potentially could have made $1,000 on top of having all the stuff that I wanted off of the car. Now, I don't want to do that with this car. If I had the space and unlimited time and resource and energy, not a big deal. But most of the things that we'd be dealing with on reselling are big parts that I would have to hope someone local needed a door, which I think actually someone local does need a door, so that worked out well. To actually take the time and energy to part out a car, in my experience anyway, has often been much harder than I expected. It's not just put it on Craigslist, put it on Facebook Marketplace, and boom, your parts are sold for full asking price without having to deal with Craigslist or deal with people blowing you off and standing you up on Facebook Marketplace. So what I'm gonna do with it is I'm actually giving it away to a local dude. Uh, he's actually a fan of the show, which is really, really cool. So he's gonna come get it. He's gonna take whatever he wants off of it. He's gonna do whatever he wants with it. I don't really care. I got what I wanted off of it, and I didn't even plan to get a spare transmission or a spare div, so I'm happy with where we're at with it. He's gonna get what he needs, and then he's gonna pass it on or junk it, or heck, I hope he makes $500 off of it after he gets what he needs off of it, because then the parts are at least going to the community. And to me, the getting it gone fast is way more important, Parts keeping cars on the road is way more important than the $35 $35. The $35 that I got offered from uh, that company called Pedal, which I won't be dealing with that, of course. Nothing against them. I'm just not dealing with it. They, The car has very little value to someone in the scrap world. It's a part-out car at this point. So yes, I do think buying a parts car in most every situation is worth the extra money. Now we got a transmission with a bell housing that we can maybe use to mock up uh, and, uh, you know, if we ever do a crazy engine swap, maybe figure out how to mate a VR6 to a Miata transmission. Who knows? We'll see what happens in the future. This has been one of many parts cars I've bought for projects, and they all end up working out really, really well for me. And even though I didn't really make any money on this, I actually did, I feel like anyway, save a bunch of money that I was already prepared, already spending anyway. And I gotta say, it looks pretty darn good. The body lines aren't perfect. It's really good on the passenger side. The body lines aren't perfect on the driver's side, but you know what? For what this car is, I think it's gonna be absolutely fine. I keep telling myself that over and over and over again in hopes that my OCD won't get the better of me and I rip it apart 17 more times to, uh, to fix this front end, but a little bit of a body gap on the front end is gonna not be that big of a deal. I had plans to possibly drill out all the spot welds and swap the whole front core support. Then I saw how many spot welds there were and I'm like, mm, Ain't nobody got time for that, so we'll just pass that on to someone else. So I have to ask you guys, what experience have you had buying a parts car, parting it out, 
getting what you need, reselling it. Have you been able to make money off of it? I sure hope you have. Post that in the comments. With that, I'm out. Guys, have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time. VR6 Turbo Swap.